Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today, we are going to be doing a continuation, a follow-up, if you will, a piggyback on <laughs> the uh, birth story video, which, by the way, thank you guys so much for all of your nice and, for the most part, everybody was positive. So everybody had positive comments. I'm glad about that. I wasn't gonna read them because I was scared that people were gonna get on my nerves. But I had proofreaders, okay, Alexis, proofread for me. Whatever you felt when you watched it, I'm glad you felt that. I just wanted to share my little story of how traumatized I was by my birth. Today, in today's video, we're going to be allowing Cameron to share his thoughts um, and perspective. This is gonna be him like kind of processing what happened. We've talked about it a little bit, I haven't heard him tell the story for real, for real. Like, I really don't even know what was going on on his side of the room. The whole birth, like, I was so focused on what I was going through and what I was feeling that I don't even remember half of the things that he was doing. It's one thing for me to tell what I felt and what I went through, but for him to share his point of view as well kind of helps to, like, bring it all together. So, okay, wait. I'm just, I'm just gonna let you talk. Yeah, then, so... So on, so on 41 weeks and uh, five days. That whole week was kind of- Scheduled the induction and all that. Hectic because I felt like her due date was wrong. When we went to like the first look, she just asked me, you know, okay, when, you, when was your last period, whatever, whatever. Okay, based on this, like, yeah, you're eight weeks and your due date's February 27th, right? But then we went to a medical place and they're like, March. What did they say? We, we, when we went to the OBGYN, I never had an um, ultrasound there. I was 20 weeks when we went to the birth center and we transferred. So they did a 20 week ultrasound where they did the whole anatomy scan and all of that. That ultrasound, they were like, oh, he's measuring a week behind. I remember that. So even with that, being the first time, uh, first time dad and, and going through the whole pregnancy timing and I didn't know the difference between like, okay, your due date is actually like a good window. And then there's like people that go to 40, like the end of the 42. And that's like, all right, eviction notice mm -hmm. is, needs to happen like now. Now we're in like 40 weeks and we have two weeks at the birth center. They, they, what's the proper term or not? Like they risk you they, out. They, yeah, they, they risk you out. out. And so you have to go meet the midwives at the hospital they have to get your medical information we're already on edge praying you know nothing you know nothing crazy happens because up until this point like everything had been good people would ask me oh, how's vicky doing how's mama doing like she's good she has no complications like baby's good like mm -hmm. everything's good he's measuring good he tests good and all these little things that he had to do we go to the birth center they do all these tests on her stomach. They hook her up to all these machines. They hook my son up to all these machines. You have video of that that I haven't seen. You have, he has so many videos I have not. I'm probably gonna put them in this video. Cause you have, don't you have video of me getting the test done? The NST test, the stress test? Where Pro they were probably. tracking my contractions? We're here at the birth center. He's already passed his due date. So now they're doing some monitoring. I don't know exactly what this is, but so we got some doohickeys on her belly. She's monitoring his heart rate fluctuations on these charts. So, I mean, obviously he's, he's chilling, he's good. But he needs to get out. You have all the ultrasound videos. I don't have any of those videos either. I was just recording. I was like, <laughs> he was recording me do everything. I don't have none of the videos. I haven't even seen them. So we're like, man, we've been at the birth center this whole time. And every time we go in there, they're like, oh, there's like a 0.4% chance that you'll risk out. Moms typically have their babies within 41 weeks. 
um, yada, yada, yada. It's going to be okay. Only You're doing so great. 2% of people transfer to the hospital. Blah, 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 blah. <laughs> I'm like, okay, God. <laughs> like, we didn't made it this far. I really don't want to go to the hospital because I just, out of all the times that I've been to hospitals, I don't like them. I don't think anybody does like the hospital. I don't enjoy them. The way that black women are treated right. in birth at hospitals is not great. So I'm like, man, I don't want my wife to be going through this. I don't want my son to have to endure this. I was just like, man, I really want us to have this baby at the birth center so things will go as smoothly as we had been planning this whole time because this is what you wanted. You know, you talk to your girls and you talk to your friends. Well, and then, you know, we had a lot of peace when we went to the birth center. You told me that you felt like at peace there, you know, and you confirmed that for me. So I was like, okay, yeah, like I want to have my baby here because we felt good at the, at the birth center. It felt like home. It did. It felt like home. And even it honestly. It felt like they really cared. It did. And even in the birth, like it still felt like that the whole time. So we're in this crazy, hectic week. All these people have been talking to us like, man, like, it, try your absolute best to, you know, not have to have hospital intervention. Mm -hmm. But like the Bible says, many are the plans in a man's heart. We have our final, like, medical-like visit at the birth center. And so when we're there, they're like, okay, Vicky, go home, get you some castor oil, and this will help push you into labor i'm like all right like it's happening right like in my mind i'm like okay she's gonna take the casserole it's gonna take a few hours it's gonna kick in and you know she gonna have this baby soon <laughs> we go get i go get the casserole we went to smoothie king to get smoothie so you can put the casserole in the smoothie and you are not amused it still tastes See, I had to take, I don't know if y'all country, you know, like my family. I had to take Castro as a kid. My grandma. I put it in my hair. Sure I, I put it in my hair before, but that, never swallowed it. That once a week when we was over there, we had two spoonfuls of castor oil so you can get cleaned out. We did not enjoy drinking gasoline. <laughs> <laughs> it tastes like hair. It just tastes like hair oil. It tastes, tastes like, like hair. Ugh. Yes, it tastes like silk press. It tastes like barrettes. <laughs> we go to Smoothie King. She puts the castor oil in the Smoothie King. And then we come home. And then the stomach starts mm -hmm. stomaching. We're doing other things that they said we should do to, you know, in, in naturally induce labor. I don't, I don't know exactly what I was doing. I think I was down here eating. Yeah, we had just got some food. Because they made me some curry goat because i asked for curry goat and you was eating my curry goat while i was upstairs dying we had just got some food shout out to the ashley's they but the, the thing some is food. people had already started making us food because we had a food train started for when we got home from having the baby but we had already passed the due date so right. far that we were already going into our food train and people were already bringing us food even though i hadn't even had the baby yet i had beef pho that i didn't get to eat vietnamese pho homemade never got to eat it because it got went bad in the fridge because we was gone i was i was so mad so i'm down here <laughs> Eating my curry goat rice and pea with the potato salad. I had one bite. it. I had one bite. It was fire. I get a text from our friend, Amanda, like, hey, I'm on my way down there. <laughs> I'm like, what you mean? Like, why? <laughs> she was like, yeah, Vicky's in labor, so I'm on my way down there. <laughs> so I go upstairs. I'm like, um, do you need to tell me something? And she just acted all calm and chill. Because I was in labor, but it wasn't hurting. And so I was like, I don't know what to do. So now we're timing. We got all the apps. We got the official apps. The same one they were using when we, when we finally get to the birth center. So I'm trying to time out these. I'm like, okay. And she's like, but they, yeah, but they don't really hurt though. I'm like, not yet. The they heck? Didn't. They didn't. The app is saying 
go, go to, to the, the hospital. hospital. It told me that so many times. It told me that like hours before you even left. The app is literally saying go to the hospital. Then I think you was on the phone with your mom. Yes, I asked her. I was like, mom, why are my attractions not hurting? They don't hurt. Now, mind you, Vicky's pain level, her pain tolerance. That's what she told me. She was like, you got a high pain tolerance. Well, it's high. The things that she endures for her to look and feel the way she wants to look and feel. <laughs> it's, it's, it's high. <laughs> we start packing. I, I come downstairs the night before. I think the night before. No, the night of when we came back from the birth center. You packed I, your I stuff. I finally packed my bag. Because mm -hmm. they were like, Cam, you ain't packed your bag. And I was like, I, I kept telling them, I was like, as soon as I pack my bag, like, he gonna come. We get all this stuff together. Vicky get, I grab her bag that she had already packed. Load all the stuff up in the car. And we head to the birth center. And my heart is thumping. You're so calm, though. That's the funny thing. We're both really calm under stress. Or we appear calm. Because, like, you just do everything so smoothly and gracefully. I couldn't tell what you were feeling because you weren't, you don't freak out. Well, I can't be freaking out. I wasn't freaking out. And, so. and, and I'm trying to, like, keep you at peace. I mean, I was already. Not that I needed to, like, keep you at peace, but. I was already didn't know how to feel because I couldn't feel my contractions like that, so. We get there. They welcome us in. We get badges so we have access to the rooms and all this stuff. We get set up in the room and I still smell the little aroma, the essential oil. It was like lavender the, the, and something. It was lavender, but when we first walked in, it was like some like citrus orange, orange smell. It was, it was great. It kept making me very, it made me feel very peaceful. That's what it's supposed to be. And sleepy. They, Vicky gets situated and then, you know, all the folks and fam start coming. And so I'm like getting everybody situated in the rooms and everything. And, and I'm like, all right, man, this is really about to start. So she's laboring on the when bouncy I, ball. When did I start actually being in pain? I don't remember. It was Late in I the got, midnight hour. It was before I got in the tub though, right? You were on the regular ball. Then they gave you the peanut ball. Oh yeah, on the bed. Yes, the doula. Okay. She was trying to get you to diff, 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 do different positions on the peanut ball. So you be in the proper position so he could move because he was like, I don't know the terms, but he was, he was leaning forward. Leaning forward and he needed to fall back into my pelvis. Come to find out, like half the things that they had her doing was just aiding in him. Being not in the pelvis. <laughs> continuing to stay forward. Hours go by, then it's like, okay. He's like, you wanna try the tub? She's in the tub, I'm holding her hand. We got the, we got the playlist going, I got the speaker going. The Afrobeat. We had the Afrobeats going. <laughs> We had Afro gospel. I don't, it seemed like you was in the tub forever. No, I was in the tub forever. I was in the tub from like 10, I was tracking the, the pictures. I was looking at the pictures, the timestamps for Amanda taking pictures. I was in the bath, I was in the tub from like 10 p.m. to like 6 a.m. So pretty much the whole- On and on, you didn't stay in the tub the whole time. Right? I mean, obviously I had to get out to poop and throw up. She, she had to poop and they're like, oh, that's good, that's good. So then she pooped and they're like, you know. Yeah, no, it, it wasn't getting painful. It, it hurt. Oh, it's starting to hurt. <laughs> what? She's up there starting, starting to hurt. hurt. It's starting to hurt. Then they got me like holding her stomach. They're like, okay, Cam, let's try this. Like, let's try if you hold her stomach up like this and then we do this. And I'm like, okay. Now, mind you, it's two, three o'clock in the morning. Also, I'm keeping everybody else up to date. I'm keeping everybody abreast of what's going on. All the moms, all the close oh my family gosh, members, yes. all the so relatives. I didn't know people were getting updated. I had no idea. They, were, they told me afterwards, they were like, yeah, we was getting updates from Cam and Lexus and we was texting it. I'm like, y'all were texting them while I was in labor, are you kidding? But then, like once it was like late in the midnight hour, I only texted back our immediate family. Oh, okay. You're such a preacher, late in the midnight hour. Okay, go ahead. I, I keep saying it because it was so late. <laughs> and Amanda was sleepy. Everybody was sleepy. No, Amanda was asleep at one point. Lexus I remember was sleepy. I was laying in the tub and that I That wig over. she had on was sleepy. <laughs> so then by this time. You this would be so bad, you said. <laughs> Y'all, it's snowing outside too. Yes, it was snowing. It was snowing all the way there. It's snowing. It was snowing all the way there. Like inches sticking. My car battery is getting a little low. When, when it's cold, it dies so fast. So then Daniel and Lexus were there. I was like, all right, Daniel, take me to the supercharger 
so I can charge. It was two minutes away. Take me to the supercharger. I'm gonna charge my car. I'm gonna leave it there. Let it fully charge, and then we'll come back here and we'll go get the car later. And then we come back, and then Vicky's still in the cell. No. Then they had you resting a little bit, and okay. I was like, all right. And they're like, Cam, like, you can go to sleep. Like, we know you're tired. You're doing so great. Like, so then I I took a little nap in this little basket weave chair they had. Oh my god, yeah. And I couldn't really sleep for real because my body was hurting. You could have gotten the bed. My neck was hurting. So then, well, I, I like, I don't know. I wanted you to like have your like space. Plus there was like oh. a peanut ball here. Listen, a pad of you the this dad. here. Then I kept like going out, checking on everybody. You know, they, Daniel was knocked out on the couch. Amanda was knocked out right here. <laughs> she was on the floor. I, I remember looking over yeah. and seeing her on the floor asleep. It's still like dark 30 in the morning. So then Vicky gets back in the tub again. I'm like sitting, leaned over in the tub. She's tired at this point. She's like, can I start pushing? <laughs> she said, can I? I was so irritated. I she just said, wanted to push. She said, can I push yet? I'm like, no, you're not, you know, you're not there yet. I walked out the room and then we're on the third different shift of nurses now. I hear them like kind of talking to stuff a little bit. So then they come back and they're like, all right, what if we try to manually break your water? Cause her water hadn't fully broken. She was like slowly dripping, but her water hadn't fully broken. So then I order breakfast for everybody. Now then- This like, is the next day in the morning. My mom's on her way. We got a crew yeah. at the birth center. So I ordered breakfast, they delivered it. I did, I did the toilet late contract, contractions. They gave me the, the laughing gas. That's when I was like, oh yeah, turn it up. We finna get turned, and I labored with the laughing she gas. She was for on hours. that. She was on that gas, y'all. She was on that gas. <laughs> Tell her, y'all, she was on that gas. That's when they had you lift my belly again. Remember, they put the thing around my belly. They yes. had to lift it up. It, it man, it was a workout, mind you. Now my body didn't go through anything near. Hear me. Be very clear, because I don't want y'all to get on here talking crazy. Because <laughs> I, I listen. I understand. I understand some things. My body didn't go through nearly anything close to what her body went through. But they was putting your boy through it. Like, no, they was putting you to work. I was, I was in there working. He was. And I was tired. Mm -hmm. I was like, I did because not you didn't have sleep. the strength. <laughs> I needed the strength of the Black Panda. And so then, yeah, the other nurses and doulas and uh, other people, they, they were like whispering. They was in the back, like trying to, trying to figure out what to do. I went out of the room to get something or go to the bathroom or something. And like, I saw them like whispering. And this was like my third time seeing them all whispering. I'm like, okay. And by then it's been over 24 hours. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, man, I know she tired. I'm like, is this normal? <laughs> and then that's when they came after we had done all we could. And I'm like, all right, we've, ex we've exhausted all of our resources. They had called the, the management leadership of the birth center to see what else they could do. And they're like, yeah, so at this point, we, you know, we're going to risk you out and we think you should go to the hospital. And in my head, I was like, all right, crap. <laughs> if I'm be completely honest, I still have faith that things were going to be OK. Um, but I was scared and I, I just want to. I just want to like let someone know that it's okay to feel like things are going to be okay, but not know how those things are going to be okay. And still be scared. <laughs> That's very normal. Not have all the answers and still trust God. Mm -hmm. This is my wife and my, my child that we talking about. Mm -hmm. They call the ambulance. And all these dudes come in <laughs> with the boots and the vest. And yes. The, I mean, it was like CSI, mm -hmm. SVU, and they had so much energy and they were smiling and stuff. I'm like, bro, why y'all smiling? Like, <laughs> like, why are you happy like, right now? Yeah, like, let's get busy. Like, this is not. This is this is not a laughing matter. No, they're like, no, it's gonna be okay. You know, is it first one, and I'm like, yeah, like, and they trying to be the holly, you know, jolly and stuff with me, and I'm just like, I really wasn't with it. Y'all don't know that side of me. Understandable. And uh, Kim can turn up. Um, they're like, it's gonna be okay. It's gonna be okay. Oh man, same thing happened to my wife. Oh man, same thing happened. Oh, it's gonna be fine. It's gonna be fine. Hey, it's gonna be fine. We're gonna take great care of her. I'm like, all right. 
I said, however fast y'all go, I'm gonna go. It's literally, there's like, no, don't do that. You know, just, you know, follow all the lights and all the signs. Oh, because you had to drive. Right, because I they I couldn't get in there with her. Yeah, you couldn't be in the hot. So I'm like, oh man, y'all y'all really y'all really tripping now. Y'all bugging out now. Like the <laughs> this is this that was so horrible. Like the content creator in me was like, oh, record a video of this. No, no, I thought the same thing when they were when they were rolling me out. I was in a robe the birth center gave me. I had no clothes on underneath, and they put me in the stretcher the the ambulance stretcher thing, and they roll me out into the freezing cold with the snow <laughs> and I'm in a robe <laughs> and they push me into the, I'm like, why is nobody getting video of this? I know that's terrible to think that way, but like that was the one part of the whole experience where I was like, I need video of this because I am not gonna believe this when I come out of this situation. I'm not gonna <coughs> believe that I actually did this. So I need to have like memory. It's one of those things that happens where you're like, you don't want this to happen, but you can't believe it's happening. It doesn't feel real. So I needed some like visual confirmation that that actually happened. It feels like a dream at this point, like a fever dream. I'm Does watching you, them. Did you even see me put, did you see them put me in the, in the ambulance? Yes. Where were you? I didn't see you. I was in the car. It was a fire truck, the ambulance, and like four police cars. Really? And the so like all the lights is on. Wow, you should have got video of this. I didn't even see all that. So yeah, so then when I drove around, you know, because we were in the back, so I had to drive out and then drive around and then back to this, the main street. I missed all the drama. And I went back to the main, like I was on that main street and I was like, dang, like my wife really in there and I was about to record. And I was like, this ain't no like Instagrammable like moment. Like It's not, but I wanted to see it. Because <laughs> I didn't know that it was all that drama. They had police cars and all that. I beat her and the ambulance to the, to the hospital in the emergency room. Our doula then meets me there. And I'm thinking like they're fat. I'm thinking like they already there. Cause I'm like, man, I ain't seen, you know what I'm saying? Like I ain't seen them. Maybe they took some back roads. So I, I get to the ER and I walk in and it's a Sunday. So it was some other people in the ER. Like they had suits on. Like you could tell they, they came from church or something. It was funny. <laughs> Uh, Cause one of the ladies like, they, all right, what Pastor, what was the word today? What happened at church? I go to the desk and they're like, who you hear this? I'm like, Victoria Logan. And and she's like typing and she's like. That probably wasn't even in the system who, yet. Who, what's their name? I don't have that name here. I but wasn't even in the system yet. Maybe, maybe they're not here yet. Sometimes it takes them a little while. So, you know, I had a little attitude. So then I went and sat there and my heart is just do, 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 do. Like if I, if I could go back to my whoop stats from that date, <laughs> The they just added the stress meter, so I can't tell you what my stress was, but I know my heart rate was up there. The doula comes and she's she's being very nice and she's being very sweet, and I don't want to answer any of these questions. I forget what I was asked. Oh, we we started talking about C sections, and I was like, man, so like, what's the recovery on that? Like, is she gonna she be already okay? brought it up? Yeah. Wow. So she probably already knew that that's what they was gonna do. Yeah. Oh, wow. Because his heart rate yeah. it, it had elevated. Right. She's like, yeah, because we're at the hospital now, she's like, they're probably gonna want her to get a C-section. And I was like, man, I was like, oh my God. Dang, so you knew before I did. I'm like, man, what's the recovery time? Like, how is that on her body? Like, is she gonna be okay? I was like, do C-sections affect, you know, postpartum, you know, depression and all that stuff. And you finally get there. I see them bring you in. And because the door was open, like in that little hallway area, I see them bring you in. I'm like, all right, she's here. And now the hospital is a maze. And so I like, can, can our doula come with, come with me? Excuse me. We don't get a lot of sleep these days. So can our doula come with me? And she was like, yeah, yeah, she's fine. We go and she helps guide me. Cause I was like, I don't know where I'm going. It's late. I've been up for 30 hours, basically. Were we in the room before you? Mm -mm. I was already in there. They had already put me in the bed. It's a stark difference. Mm -hmm. Stark difference from the birth center <laughs> to this hospital room we were in. All the colors are from 1991. <laughs> it smells sterile. It smells sterile. Cold and uninviting. <laughs> yeah, it, like the, the, all the lights, they don't have white lights. No, yeah. They They're all warm, warm, orange, tingy. Depressed lights. lights. Vicky's in the room, the doctor comes in, and she comes in with a stern apostolic voice. 
Well, because you you had come in after she had already done my cervix check, or did you see her do? The cervix I didn't check? see her do the cervix. check. Oh yeah, so you had you had you had missed the cervix check. When she did that cervix check and she stuck her hand all the way up my cervix, you would have been scared for me then, because that ish hurt. You would not have been okay. You probably would have threw up. Mind you, they had you hooked up again. Yeah, no, they had things. They had already started my IV, and, and um, they had uh, his heart rate going, mm -hmm. and it was high, and I was like. Oh my God, what does this mean? I, I don't know why I feel like she said, she didn't say this, but I, I'm saying it like this. She said, I feel like we should make a motion, <laughs> a motion to move that you get a C-section. Um, and we do an emergency C-section ASAP. His heart rate is elevated. He's not in your pelvis. And I don't know how much I can say on here so I don't like make the other place look bad, but I mean, no, I don't think that would certain pieces bad. of information that we just weren't privy to. Yeah, that I was not happy about because we were told he was engaged in her pelvis. And then once we got to the hospital, the doctor said that he was not engaged in her pelvis and he was still floating around in her stomach. So I was upset again. <laughs> Once they did that, it was like, we'll give you, we'll give you guys some time to think, you know, talk about it, whatever, whatever. My heart starts pumping even harder. I'm trying not to like lose it. We talk it over. The doula is telling us the different things about, you know, yeah, I think you guys should do it. I think this is the best case scenario. I think it's going to be fine. You know, we don't want to keep waiting. His heart rate's elevated. How are you guys feeling? I'm like, well, like, yeah, like, okay, let's get to it. Your voice starts shaking a little bit and you start crying. And then I start crying. And I was like, oh my God, like, this is, this is a lot. This it's is a lot. This is so much because it's like pregnancy goes by so, like time really goes by so fast, but the pregnancy it feels like it went by so fast because we didn't find out till she was eight weeks. There's just so many emotions that you're feeling and that you're going through and that you're dealing with. Even as, you know, the husband, like we had so many lows and then you have so many highs. Baby shower in Texas and then baby shower here. And then so many people were blessed that we have so many people that love us and want to pour into us and, you know, want to pour into Xander and buy stuff. And the aunties have been buying stuff for months and sending it to the house and packages and preparing and getting the house ready and had a guy come over and took 45 hours to, to paint the room paint the room <laughs> and spent too much money on this and spent too much money yeah, on that and yeah. then you know as a man that I'm feeling you know different emotions I'm like man man did I miss God in this area or did I miss God in this area because certain things didn't work out the way we wanted them to and all of these things like when you're in the heat of this moment like it's like my entire life flashed before my eyes but more specifically, like the last 12 months of my life. And I'm like, man, like, am I really ready for this? Like, can I, can I really do this? And then the enemy likes to plant seeds of doubt and discord and anxiety and depression and failure and all these different thoughts in your mind. The doula asked me to pray. She's like, Cam, she's like, Cam, you want to pray? And I was like, I'm crying. Like, we both crying. I'm like, I, like, I would, but like, I, can't, I wouldn't be able to get a word in because I'd just be crying. Right. And so I was like, can you pray? And she prayed. And it was powerful. They came back in. They're like, "All right, what's the decision?" They're like, "We're we're gonna we're gonna go ahead and do the C-section." So then they start opening up all this stuff. Okay, here, here, sign this, sign this waiver. And they were doing this so fast. Take all your jewelry off and put it in this biohazard bag, and it's not clear. It's red, so you can't tell what's in it. And if you <laughs> put it down anywhere, we're probably gonna throw it away because we don't know your jewelry's in there, even though we told you to put your jewelry in here. So then they take her. R.I.P. to my jewelry. They take her to the prep room. They take her to the OR, the operating room, and they put. They take me to this room that she's gonna be in after she comes out of the operating room. Mm -hmm. They give me the stuff I'm supposed to put on. It ain't scrubs, but you know the hair net and the mm -hmm. full suit and stuff. By then I was done crying. A message that I had taught. It was like use your weapon, like. There are so many things that I can't control right now, but the one thing that I can't control is my worship. So then I just, I turned on worship music and the song that got me through was Fear Is Not My Future, the Todd Galbraith version with Tasha Cobbs Leonard. And I played that on repeat the entire time that they, she was getting prepped for surgery, 
the entire time that she was in surgery. Even when they let me come in the room, I still had the music going on my phone. They brought me into the room. They had the curtains and stuff up and sealed off. And I just kept telling myself, and it's crazy, because even though it's like every God knows everything. My dad was literally telling me the things that he saw with my mom's C-section and like the different things that he was going through in his mind and different things like, yeah, you may be queasy. And he's like, yeah, I don't do blood stuff like that. He's like, but when it comes to your wife and your, your child, like all that stuff go out the way. He's like, no, you're going to be fine. And I was like, yeah, like praying that doesn't have to happen. Well, it did. I'm glad he had prepared me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and so, yeah, the things that I saw, I won't go into the, the gory, gory details. No, do. Tell us. Um, <laughs> We're open here on this channel. It's not Instagram sexy. Yeah. See, no, like, no, like stuff gets ugly. Literally, I walked in a room and I saw blood on the floor. They walking over it. You know, they got their feet and stuff covered up too. I'm like, that's my wife's blood Ooh. on the ground. And I'm just like, okay, Cam, don't look. <laughs> You're going to be okay. Bro, I'm surprised You're you didn't You're not pass gonna out. faint. <laughs> Cause I still got my worship music going. They had the curtain thing up. I was like, Cam, don't look in there. Cause they're already, they're already, she's open. They already, multiple layers that they had to cut through. I didn't know that. Mm. <laughs> I ain't know that. Multiple layers that they're cutting through. Seven. And her hand is out. I'm in there, I'm holding her hand. Like, you weren't like, uh, crying but like you were like tears was like rolling down your, your the size of your face and she was like when are y'all gonna start and i'm like babe they started and her, her hand is like trembling like this because she she's not she can't control it i don't even think you knew you were doing it mm -mm. and so i'm, I'm, I'm like babe i'm right here i'm just holding her hand I'm like babe i'm right here i got you and I, I mean i kid you not it was like quick it was like yeah like five minutes five minutes she was like make sure you know you record she's like get some video and i'm like like we really can't do that but because the iphone has the picture button she's like you can take pictures but no video because the iphone has the picture button you just press that button that picture and you just hold on and it'll and start it's a video and so i got like a eight second video and then right after i did that we heard ah! and man my mourning turned into dancing. My sorrow turned into joy. I was like, babe, that's our boy. And they, they picked him up and they, and, they helped, and they brought him over. And I saw all that hair and I saw how big he was. Big old baby. And I, was, I looked at I was like, bro, that dude looked just like me. <laughs> <laughs> and when they had brought him over to the table where like they clean him up and stuff. So then they were like, dad, you want to cut the umbilical cord? I was like, yeah. And the, the umbilical cord, that joint was tough. <laughs> it took a couple, and even that, it's like, uh, uh. <laughs> you weren't looking. Oh, I was looking, but it was just like, oh my god, like this is this was inside of you. <laughs> you saw you know, more of it than me. I ain't see none of it. And like they was holding him up, and he was like making that face because <laughs> it was bright, and he had his hands out like this, and dude had these. I mean, got these big old hands and feet and muscles. That's how he be looking. He be doing and that now. like, man. And then Vicky's like, I want to do, when can I do skin to skin? Can I do skin to skin? Can I do, can I do skin to skin? She's like going in. I was going to hop off can the I table. Do skin skin? I couldn't hop off the table because I couldn't feel half my body. But if I could feel half my body, I would have hopped up off that table. <laughs> this, I was like, man, that's my boy. Like, that's all I kept saying. I was like, that's my boy. I was like, babe, this is our boy. That's my boy. <laughs> He got a handful of hair. He got waves. And she's like, one second, we got to, you know, clean him up, whatever, whatever. They did the f footprints. And then when they was doing that, he peed on the, the one guy. <laughs> it was a lady and it was a guy. They were cleaning him up. And he was like, oh, he's like this little punk. And I was finna, I was finna beat dude. You know what? No, he didn't say that. Okay. Oh, no, I would have fought him. I'm glad I couldn't feel my legs. Not funny. So then they brought him over and they laid him on Vicky's chest area she'll probably insert a clip right here well i posted it all, all over the internet so oh yeah there yeah go to her tiktok There's like he, yeah he was trying to like eat her face and <laughs> like you still had them little tears and stuff and it's just like man like this is our boy like that's all I, I like that's all i could say they let me take him so they can you know patch her up <laughs> i said that respectfully sew me back up 
and uh, they let me take them and then I did skin to skin with them back in the room that they had me waiting uh, while she was getting prepped. And uh, I, still had, I still had the worship music going and I was just holding them and um, I was just, just rocking. And I was just like, like, man, like I just was thanking God. He was chilling. He didn't cry or nothing. Like he was just chilling. I was just like, man, like you're here. I think I literally said that you're really here. You told him. Yeah. You here. Like, I was like, <laughs> He's like, I know. I was in awe, and at that moment, I knew my life would we'll never would be ne the same. <laughs> my life would my never life. be the same. It's like this dude, you didn't, you didn't jack me up in the in a good way. Like I already love you more than anything. <laughs> like, like, dude, like whatever you want, you got it. He was just chilling on me, and I've never been one of them kind of people. Oh my God, like baby smells. He he smells, he still smells amazing, but like. That fresh out the womb smell? I, d I don't understand. He smelled incredible. Been floating around in my body for nine incredible. months. Incredible. Like, he didn't smell like intestines or nothing like that. He Ugh, smelled like... Because he wasn't in my intestines. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm just saying. It's like he was inside your, your body. Like, he didn't smell like... He smelled great. Beautiful curly hair. Just a beautiful boy. Born eight, eight pounds, 12 ounces, 20 and a half inches. Then they brought Vicky back in. It seemed like that was a, a while. It wasn't like I was tired of holding him. I was just like, okay, like, what y'all doing with my wife now? Yeah. So then they brought her back Don't in. Me. <laughs> Your parents had literally just got to the hotel, basically. The hotel. The, the hospital. hospital. I'm a little delusional. And my parents were there, so they was all in the family waiting area. And then after they did some tests on her and... I ain't like that. I was like, ah, I can't. Oh, they was pressing on my stomach. Cause Vicky don't, Vicky, she don't be in pain like that. And she, they pressing her, she's like, oh. Like, and I'm just like, oh my God, I can't deal with this. <laughs> it hurts so bad. So she was like, all right, she's like, I'm gonna be back in another 15 minutes. And I'm gonna, I'm sorry, but I have to do it again. So they came back again. I was like, bro, like, I can't, I can't deal with y'all like causing pain to her. They press my stomach every day like that. Every day. You breastfed him a little while. He latched on. I mean, that was like five minutes. He didn't. But do, still, like, he didn't do that. It wasn't in there. It's just you know when you when when you first got yeah, out the room. Yeah, but he did. He did latch on right away. And then shortly thereafter, we got transferred to maternity. I don't know what the what the other side was called. And the family's out there, so I went and talked to them. And I was like, man, y'all, like this guy, man. I showed them the pictures I had taken, and everybody was toe up <laughs> and happy, and it was just. It was a time, you know, I've said it before, I'll say it again. I said it in my, in one of the reels that I put, I'm so glad that I don't have to endure the things that she has had to endure and that mothers all across the world, all the ma, shout out to all the strong, beautiful, powerful women that have birthed little humans into this world because it couldn't have been me. It couldn't have <laughs> Couldn't have been me. That's pretty much the gist of it. She's a superhero. She's incredible. She's amazing. Well, thanks. So are you. I, you did a great job. I'm forever indebted you to did love a great you, job. to have, to hold, to cherish. <laughs> in sickness and in health, to death do us part. <laughs> Shout out to all the pair. Okay. Well, you did a great job too. I'm proud of you. Thank you. You were very supportive. You said all the right things. Thank you. You're the best. You're the best. We made a whole baby. We did. Catch us on the flippity flip. Catch us <laughs> on the flippity flip. On the flippity flip. We have more videos coming one day, eventually. <laughs> Maybe the podcast will come back. Oh, be sure to check out Cam's channel. He has a whole video yes. of him talking about golf. So All the men subscribe to my channel ASAP right now. Do it.